all right, so let's talk about static equilibrium. So really the biggest way you should look at static equilibrium questions is it's really a, a, all, any question that you see in static equilibrium, it'll come down to force analysis drawing free body diagrams. Um, one of the things that's, uh, I guess, nice about static equilibrium is that, well, it's going to be equilibrium. So the acceleration will be zero, angular acceleration will be zero. So um, in that aspect, you don't have to worry about any velocity changing, you don't have to worry about angular velocity changing, um, you don't have to worry about energy changing. So, so th this part does make static equilibrium questions a little bit simpler, but because it is a simpler, you tend to see more forces acting on an object. That's what I mean, this is going to be more of a force analysis question, because you are going to see like a carpenter on ladder, there's no fewer than four forces involved that you have to you know, make sure to identify them on Fermi body diagram and analyze. So, um, I guess the things that you need to know, I guess the good place to start is the equilibrium condition. This is something that you are going to be starting out with for every static equilibrium problem. That equilibrium condition is that net force is equal to zero and up as a vector, and net torque also as a vector is equal to zero. This is all tied to the fact that acceleration is zero, and angular acceleration is zero. That's why net force and net torque has to be equal to zero. And um, hopefully by this point, you have a pretty good intuition about force. So hopefully you don't need a lot of review of force. As in, you already have a good sense of what kind of forces need to be identified, what kind of things are not forces if you thought they were forces before. So really the emphasis should be on how you calculate torque. That's really the part where um, you might not be as familiar. And um, so let me write down the expression for torque as a reminder. This is the um, different ways we have expressed the torque. We have expressed the torque. Um, I guess the, if I'm to give you the definition of torque, the definition of torque would be the rate of change of angular momentum. Um, but for this topic, this is not all that helpful. You're in static equilibrium, angular momentum is not going to change. Because, uh, you know, you're, so this is only useful if there's only one torque acting and you're, okay, okay, so this is not very helpful. So let me write down the expression for torque that's based on force. So expression for torque that's based on force, um, if you're dealing with the vector torque, it would be the displacement cross F. Sounds familiar? So you should remember that. Now, if you don't quite remember the whole cross product, that's fine. With a static equilibrium, uh, we are not going to deal with the rotation as a full three-dimensional thing. Um, dealing with the rotation as a full three-dimensional thing, it really comes in with the angular momentum and precession. That is the one thing that you need a full three-dimensional treatment to explain. So that might be on the final, but you know, worry about that for the final, not exam three. So for exam three, what we are really interested in is the absolute value of this. We are not really, we, we can describe things as clockwise and counterclockwise. That's good enough for us. So when you look at absolute magnitude of torque, Magnitude of torque is going to be this. Um, R, F, sine, theta. And hopefully you remember how this theta was defined. Yes? And uh, we had two different ways of expressing this. One was expressing it as R times F sine theta. And really what this is, is uh, it's the R, the total displacement, times a component of the force that's a perpendicular to the displacement, right? Yes, yeah, there are some geometries where this will be more helpful, um, some geometries. Uh, but more often, you are actually uh, more helped by this other expression, 
where you group sine theta with r. So it's r sine theta times f. So this way of calculating torque, you are looking at force multiplying with this quantity of length. And we actually, this is so useful so often, we gave this its own name. Um, this is the lever arm. And in many of the questions involving the rotation, this will usually be the easiest way to express torque. So this is where you should start. Although, you know, depending on the question, you might uh, fall back to this, or you might go all the way back to this. Okay. But you know, being, being able to identify lever arm correctly will be important in analyzing static equilibrium questions well. Um, so I guess that's the biggest portion of static equilibrium. So you know, remember when you're drawing free body diagrams, you have to indicate location of force, location of force, because once you are dealing with the torque, then where the force is acting matters. Um, let's see. Um, some knickknacks to remember. Uh, as you're analyzing, sometimes you're, you will get a description of question that doesn't tell you all the forces that are there right away. So here are some reminders that, to, that I want you to remember so that you don't, get, you don't feel like you are, uh, you are not given a complete set of information. So one of the things that you should keep in mind is static friction is often a big factor. Static friction is something that's always there, or that can potentially always be there whenever there's a, a rotation involved. In fact, um, even in this case, like you know, look at this ring, um, the way this ring moves, now you're gonna see it move. Um, that, is this? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, now you're gonna see this ring move. It only works if you say there is a friction. Because you know, when I push it at the height of the center of mass, the ring actually begins to rotate. So you have to be able to describe, okay, something is giving it uh, torque. And if you're calculating about the center of mass, what's gener generating that torque? My finger is not, the lever arm for my finger is zero. So the force that is generating torque is the friction force. So you know, my mantra has been in this class, we always ignore friction unless you can't. This is one of the common situations where you cannot ignore friction. To actually explain what happens, you will often need to bring in friction, static friction to explain it. So remember friction. Um, even when the problem doesn't explicitly mention it, you will um, often have to bring in friction to explain what you see. You have to assume that there must be friction. If there's no friction, things are, should have just slid it. Um, and I guess that's the biggest thing. The other things are smaller things. I think it's in your homework, like a normal force. So with the normal force, now you have to begin to understand that the normal force does not have to act at the center of the um, object. Like uh, there's a normal force between floor and my foot. If I lean forward, the location where the normal force acts actually changes. It moves from middle of my foot to somewhere near the toe. And if I lean forward so much that it goes over the toe, then I cannot maintain my equilibrium and go over. Um, or you know, if I lean backward, the, the location where normal force acts moves towards my heel. So the location of normal force becomes, depending on some problem, something that you have to actually pay attention to and be careful about. So location of normal force is another thing. You have seen it, uh, you should have seen it uh, as you are working on some homework questions and in some very few lecture examples. So, um, but you know, these are the two advices I would, two additional advices I would give you when you're dealing with a static equilibrium question that's sort of uh, complication beyond what you have seen for your exam one. All right, um, I guess a uh, couple more knickknacks to remember. So there's, uh, um, this is probably a good place to remember the distinction between stable and unstable equilibrium. Although, I think that might have been, I 
think that was kind of an exam too, uh, because this relates to uh, sp uh, pen spring motion. But well, but you know, it's equilibrium, so it's good to know the distinction between stable and unstable equilibrium. Um, I guess there's a neutral equilibrium, but I don't really care about those. Um, let's see, what else did I forget about static equilibrium? Anything feels like I forgot? No? Well, let's see what I forgot. So when you look at this set of topics, you will see that it includes the whole rotation. But you know, a lot of things in rotation, you won't have to worry, up, or worry about for exam three, like the, uh, the kinetic energy. Um, it's going to be zero, because <laughs> it will be static equilibrium. Um, yeah, or rotational kinetic energy. But uh, yeah, I think I actually trimmed out the things that you don't have to worry about. Um, OK, so, so those are together probably somewhere between 30 to 40% of the exam. 